Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the high cost of prescription drugs is a huge problem. Let's talk about the best way to tackle this public health crisis. Ms. Riley, your association, which is called Pharma, represents brand name drug companies. And you said in your testimony that, quote, the competitive market is the engine that drives the drug industry. So I take it you think that market solutions are the most effective way to deal with the rising price of drugs. I do believe that markets lower costs, yes. Good. I love markets, and I also believe in market-based solutions. So let's talk about one of the best market-based solutions, and that's competition. If the restrictions that prevent purchasers from importing the exact same drugs at lower prices from places like Canada were removed, we'd see some real competition, and we'd see some lower prices. Another market solution is negotiation. If the federal government were allowed to negotiate more competitive drug prices, for Medicare beneficiaries, the prices would come down. So, Ms. Riley, you've already said that pharma opposes uh, importation of drugs from Canada. Um, I, let me ask about letting the federal government negotiate with drug companies over Medicare prices, these two market-based solutions. Well, I, I would argue price controls are not a market-based solution. When foreign I'm sorry, I didn't ask about price controls. I asked about bringing in drugs... That we need drugs with from other here. countries that price control their products is not a market-based way to get so the drug. So you would be in favor of drug importation from any place that's not doing what you call price control? I would argue that almost every country outside of the U.S. Oh, so there's no place we limit can import prices. from that would satisfy your requirements. How about the federal government competing? Uh, and, and actually having some competition and saying we're going we're gonna to negotiate prices. I think there's often a fallacy that because the, the federal government is not setting prices in Medicare that there's not negotiation, and that couldn't be further from the truth. As we've seen in the Medicare Part B program, there's been robust no negotiation. Rebates are over 35% on average in Part D. So you're let me, let me just stop you there. So I just want to make sure I understand the point of the group that you represent here and lobby for, and that is... Is it that the federal government ought to be able to negotiate all drug prices? No, we don't believe the federal government's in the best position. We have rapid market consolidation in the pharmacy benefit manager space that exerts significant pressure to the tune of over $100 billion in rebates last year. I understand that you have other concerns, but you know, drug competition from Canada, price negotiation are market solutions. They're not government mandates. And I would have thought that if you believe in market solutions, you would have embraced them. Well, and I don't believe that price controls are market-based solutions, and I also think that you need to look at the downsides that happen in those countries, which is patients don't get the kind of access that they get to therapies here in the United States. I realize that you can call it price controls, but this is a real question of whether or not there's any place else for consumers to go to purchase drugs, or whether or not the federal government can negotiate on a drug-by-drug basis every time taxpayers are picking up the ticket. Well, I the Congressional Audit Office has looked at this. who are testifying here today spent a combined total of $30 million lobbying Congress last year. Pharma, your organization is responsible for almost three quarters of that total, and a lot of that money that is spent lobbying Congress is to keep drug prices high. That's what improves profitability for your industry and the companies you represent. And here's what I think is really wrong about this. You talk about wanting market solutions, but your industry isn't based on competitive markets. It's based on totally artificial, taxpayer-granted monopolies. Companies invent new drugs, and then the government hands the companies the exclusive right to manufacture and sell those drugs at whatever prices they want for decades. So I just have a little bit of time left, but I want to ask, do you know the average length of a government-granted monopoly for top-selling drugs in this country? 10 to 12 years. Yeah, 10 to 12 years. The law says five. No. Five years of exclusivity, but drug companies game the system. According to a 2015 analysis by researchers at Harvard, companies end up with a monopoly that lasts a medium length of 12 and a half years. Senator Ryan patents for 20 years long. long. Mr. Chairman, 20 years. That is how long a pharmaceutical patent is. We also have five I'm sorry, years of data. The law says five years of exclusivity on the basic drugs. Absolutely. And the average, do you think the Harvard study, they don't know how to do it there to study how much money you're making off these things or how long you have exclusivity? Senator Warren, I'm simply saying that companies have five years of data exclusivity. Immediately after that, a generic company can get to market. And let me tell you, they try very hard to get to market as soon as they can. And you're saying that the drug companies don't gain the system at all to expand their exclusivity to an average of 12 and a half years. It just happens. happens. Senator Warren passed for 20 years long. Exclusivity is a complete well, different issue. I story on someone else who's going to be willing to listen to it. I just wanted to say, taxpayers watch when we've granted exclusivity to these companies, and then they watch as the prices go up, and there's not a darn thing for taxpayers to do about it. This is just fundamentally wrong.